another additional critical factor in phase three is position number three and we get a lot of grief uh, about this position too because there's a lot of schools uh, a, a thought about the, uh, the whole idea of uh, the backside and what you got to do in a pro game it's not uh, as incumbent to have as complete a backside pivot or as consistent because you, these guys are bigger stronger they use most of them use the whole the whole field typically uh, the ball gets in on them uh, a little deeper and you know it's two different swings really and so down here on the level where we're 18 and under where we're trying to really focus on consistent contact uh, it's been our experience over the last decade and some change in all those video clips that this is one of the most important pieces that can be argued all day long but it comes down to basic kinetics uh, we've had discussions with people that say absolutely you don't backside pivot you'll have those school of thoughts out there uh, the same uh, school of thoughts about that whole front side and the stride uh, but just take it from somebody who's looked at enough video to get to the moon and back more than one time that uh, these are very important uh, uh, positions uh, for consistency and to harness both proper balance direction and the release of power uh, in a consistent contact uh, within any part of the strike zone. So here you have a situation where you've got a backside pivot foot shoe strings towards the pitcher as some would say and what a lot of folks don't seem to put into play is the kinetics that are involved uh, kinetics is basically the study of movement and one of the underlying factors of the backside pivot foot is in the fact that your hips have to turn and be squared with the pitcher on about 80 percent of the swings you'll take now that's from hitting balls from the middle end the hips have to turn and be squared. Now, on balls away, you don't have that much uh, rotation of the hips because you're not required to rotate them because you're uh, going to be going away from the plate. So about 80% of the swings that you'll take are going to be requiring that the hips torque or turn and become squared in a final position. Well, in that regard, if the backside pivot foot is not working in conjunction with the knee and the thigh and the hips to turn quickly and, it, and with the explosive movement tied directly to the hands entering as well. See there's this this coordinated uh, kind of imaginary race that the knob of the bat and the knee, backside knee, are into this kind of imaginary race to get to this, the uh, phase three position or that imaginary line that divides the body. So there's this thing that goes on. Well in that regard if the hips are not turning because the backside leg is not participating uh, in the pivot, say we follow the school of thought where there is no backside pivot, then what's going to turn the hips open? Well, the only possible uh, part of the body that can do that would be the front side pulling the hips through. Well, that would require that the front side do something that's not supposed to do because remember, we're trying to keep the front side shoulder and the front side of the body in on the plate as long as possible. Why? Because if the front side of the body goes uh, either forward or off the plate before the hands hit this position that you see before you now, then you're going to have that bad arc. You're going to lose that whole idea of what we give the players a visual of, uh, of the hawk attacking down in the strike zone. Understand a hawk typically sits at the highest point and views from a top and then attacks from top down to get to its prey. Well it's the same idea with hitting. That's why we've gone to such great strides to maintain a bat position and a hand position throughout phase one and two whereby your hands are constantly above the strike zone because we know your hands much like that hawk are going to attack from up top and attack into or any part of that strike zone that natural strike zone so in order to do that effectively we've got to keep everything in alignment there's the emphasis on the front side foot because obviously if the front side foot opens up, the whole front side of the body opens up and we get back into that teeter-totter example that we used before. Whereas if the front side goes out off the plate, it's like the teeter-totter on one end going up and then the other side of the teeter-totter drops. Well, in this case, the back side of your uh, body drops and now we have a low to high. Well, a hawk doesn't attack from low to high and have much success. He's going to attack from up top down and have greater success. Well. The idea of this backside pivot foot 
and it's exploding with the knee and the hip as the hands in conjunction with the knee and the hip and the foot enter that imaginary line that's going to enable that shoulder to stay tight and in on the plate whereas with the school of thought that says hey you don't you don't you don't backside pivot well that's that's just insane because what's going to pull those hips through if you're going to hit any ball with any kind of consistency so that's kind of what you're going to be up against as you hear this concept of this backside pivot foot it's going to help keep you anchored here keep you on the backside because again anything that pulls you forward or pulls you off the plate prior to your hands hitting that imaginary line that you see the hands positioned in now is going to cause that bat head to drop the bat head as you see it now is exactly the position that it needs to be in as it enters the beginning of the contact zone and how it's able to do that is by the integrity of the front side and the discipline of the front side and the uh, backside pivot foot working in conjunction with the knee and the hips and the hands attacking together into that C position or what we call phase three. C being the center, center line that we've identified. So I think we've expounded on this point enough for you to understand that there are some pros and cons out there, but we want to give you the kinetic uh, overview of why it's important that your player, all said and done, needs to be in an almost uh, identical or very similar position right here as we freeze the frame so that we can ensure that the timing is going to be correct because what you'll see if that backside pivot foot is not working in conjunction then the hands will get a head so if for example if you paused your personal video clip and the hands or right there where they're supposed to be and you don't see a pivot foot the next phase you're going to see is you're going to see where that bat head kind of loops into the strike zone and it's the same as if that hawk is attacking from a low position up and I you know you want to attack from a position or your player to attack from a position of being up going down which is a much easier road to hoe and it's going to give them maximum opportunity to get uh, complete plate coverage so we know that's a lot of content and uh, but we hope that you can uh, see this very same identical position in your personal clip and if you don't then we've given you the information and why you need to and why it should it's a very pivotal piece of how we've done our video analysis and I guarantee again as I mentioned before all of our players who have the, the best uh, consistent uh, control and command over the strike zone have both the front side foot position and the back side foot position uh, that has allowed that hand position and that bat barrel to be there almost every single time and it's a discipline and I guarantee it it'll improve contact 1000 percent by having that bottom side with the front side and now with the back side pivot foot in position just as we're as we're saying now so let's move to position number four